today is, or tonight is Trinity Sunday, first Sunday after Pentecost, the Feast of the Holy Trinity. And I'm going to be here again in, well, actually, I guess in Westmoreland, Kansas here. And also, we note that today is Trinity Sunday, uh, as of uh, last <laughs> night, or I guess only a couple of hours ago, the Easter season came to an end. So the Easter season was from the first Sunday of Lent, which was back in February, until yesterday. And that all Catholics are obliged to receive communion at least once worthily during the Easter time. And the Easter time began you know, back in February and ended yesterday, uh, June the 6th, this year. And so any Catholic that didn't receive Holy Communion worthily at least once during this time would be in the, uh, uh, without in the, in which, without necessity being able to uh, uh, avoid, did not receive his Holy Easter Communion would be guilty of mortal sin. So all Catholics are obliged to receive Holy Communities once during the Easter time. The Easter time ended yesterday, ended last night. And uh, so Trinity Sunday begins the season after Pentecost. And yesterday, the Saturday after Pentecost, was the end of the Easter time. Of course, some people don't, don't have Mass in our movement for very long periods of time. So they the, uh, being only having Mass once or, or even not at all during this time would not be guilty of any kind of <coughs> violation or any sin. Anyone is impossible to be able to make it to Holy Communion. But to receive Holy Communion word at least once during the Easter time. Remember the other precept, which is to receive Holy uh, Confession at least once a year. You normally remember when you receive the confession, the Holy Communion, that's a, that's a Holy Communion received in the state of mortal sin, does not fulfill the Easter duty, and it must be a Holy Communion received in the state of grace, a worthy Holy Communion, and uh, so obviously simple received Holy Communion does not, does not uh, fulfill the obligation of the Easter Holy Communion. So there should be a confession before receiving the Holy Communion, at least once during the Easter time, of course we should receive Holy Communion throughout the year, and whenever possible, but at least once between February of this year, 2020, and yesterday, <coughs> Today, the Feast of the Holy Trinity, the Epistle for this Sunday, first Sunday of Pentecost, always suppressed by the, by the Feast of the Holy Trinity, is taken from the St. Paul's under the Romans, chapter 11. Oh, the depth of the riches of the wisdom of the knowledge of God and of the knowledge of God. How incomprehensible are his judgments and how unsearchable his ways. For who hath known the mind of the Lord? Or who hath been his counselor? Or who hath first given to him and recompense shall be made him? For of him and by him and in him are all things. To him be glory forever. Amen. And the Gospel. Taking that according to St. Matthew, chapter 28. At that time, Jesus said to his disciples, All power is given to me in heaven and on earth. Going therefore, teach ye all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. These are them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you all days, even unto the consummation of the world. Those are the words of today's holy God. We are in this feast of the Holy Trinity, and it is a, a Blessed Trinity is the most important and central dogma of not only our faith, but of all reality. Because remember that in the beginning, there is only God. Outside of God, absolutely nothing. In the beginning, there is God. Outside of God, nothing. And God is Father, Son, Holy Ghost. So the trees come from the Father and the Son of the Holy Ghost. The rocks, all non-living things, the angels, the stars, all things come from the Father, Son, Holy Ghost. And then God decided to create man at the end of his work of creation, which took six days. And everything God created came from the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. The Father and the Son of the Holy Ghost created all things. Father and the Son of the Holy Ghost maintain all things. And then the Father and Son of the Holy Ghost spoke their first words about man. But on the sixth day of creation, God said, Let us, that's more than one, let us make man 
according to our own image and likeness. So let us, God said, let us, Father, Son, Holy Ghost, three persons, make man according to our own image, one image, that's the image of God. Man is made in the image and likeness of God. He is made by the person of the Father, <laughs> made by the person of the Son, made by the person of the Holy Ghost. And ever since that time, God has willed that his nature, that his truth, be made, be constructed, be pushed, be, be spread throughout the world by persons. So that there is the person of Adam, there is the person of Eve, there is the person of the Pope, there is the person of bishop, the person of priest, the person of every individual, and we are supposed to be unto the image of God. And we are supposed to be God like unto God. And we're supposed to make the world more and more uh, 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 for God, from God, by God, in God, of God, as it says in the, in the, in the epistles today. So the Blessed Trinity is something most necessary. No man can be man without the Trinity. It is if the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost did not speak in one voice, and say, let us make man, there would be no creation. And God saw that everything he did was good, everything <coughs> he said was good. And he decided that it is very important for us to know that he is Father and Son and Holy Ghost. Now one of the great evils of the last 150 years is that Catholic priests have been taught a new teaching. And they have been taught even before Vatican II, the priests were taught that as long as you believe there is one God, it's enough. As long as you believe what nature says, we all know there is one God, it is enough. And yet, we know that it's not enough to believe that there is one God. Who believes there is one God does not go to heaven. In order to go to heaven and see God face to face, what do you see with your face? No man can see God. No man has seen God. That's what it says in sacred scripture. No man has seen God. But we will see God face to face. There will be three faces that we see. We will see the face of the Father. We will see the face of the Son. We will see the face of the Holy Ghost. But we will not see God. We will be in God. We will possess God. We will see the Father who is God. We will see the Son who is God, and we will see the Holy Ghost who is God. And it is most necessary to know that whoever believes in God must recognize that He is personal. He is a personal God. And there are three persons in this God. The only true God is one God, but the only true God is three persons. And there must be a Father, there must be a Son, there must be a Holy Ghost. Three persons. It is most essential and most necessary. However, 150 years ago, something very bad happened. Priests started to teach, as long as you believe, there's only one God. And you know there's only one God. You don't have to believe explicitly. You don't have to believe clearly that there is Father, <laughs> Son, Holy Ghost. It's better to know that but it's not necessary to know that. It's something like telling a man that it is good to have water in your body, and it's good to have air in your body, and it's good to have blood in your body. But you don't have to have water, air, and blood in your body. In your body. You'll be fine as long as you have a body. And if the body is missing water, and the body is missing blood, and the body is missing air, you'll still be fine. No, you will not be fine. Because in order to have a body that is alive, the body must have air in it, the body must have water in it, and the body must have blood in it. And if, it's, if it doesn't have these things, it's dead. It doesn't exist. It's not a body. And so what happened is, that priest started to tell people, as long as you believe there is one God. And what happened about many years later? That way they started saying that in the 1800s. And then all of a sudden, in 1965, or 1964, Vatican Council II came out and said, Muslims <coughs> and Catholics worship the same God. 
Muslims don't worship the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost, but they think there's only one God. They are idolaters. They are not worshiping the true God. God is not a number. God is not the number one. God is one nature, but God is three real persons, three faces of the one God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost. This is so essential that from the very earliest childhood, we tell all little children, who made you? God made me. Well, what is God? God is the Father, God is the Son, and God is the Holy Ghost. We make the sign of the cross, knowing that God is Father, God is Son, and God is Holy Ghost. And there is no, anyone who not, does not believe with his mouth, does not make confession with his mouth, who does not believe that, Father, that God is Father and Son and Holy Ghost, he does not attain eternal happiness. He does not ever get the opportunity to see God face to face. He must believe in the Father and the Son and Holy Ghost. It is a most supernatural, most necessary truth for our salvation. The Blessed Trinity is not an option. And many modern theologians of the last 100 years, 150 years, many of them say, well, of course it's better to know explicitly that there is Father, Son, Holy Ghost, but it is not necessary. And this is a lie. It is most necessary. Whoever who does not believe that God is Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, three faces, three persons, one God, cannot attain happiness. And it is, sacred scripture says the truth when it says, no man has seen God. That meant no man sees the nature of God. Just like no man has ever seen my nature. You do not see my nature. I am one man. I have human nature inside of me. You don't see it, but you do see my face. You do see my body, but you do not see my nature. When we go to heaven, we will not see nature of God. We will see the face of God. And when God speaks, God does not speak from his nature. He speaks from his face, which is the reason why God says, let us, the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost, speaking all three together like a choir singing in harmony, like a choir singing together, three voices speaking together and singing, let us make the stars, let there be light. When God said, let there be light, three voices spoke. The Father spoke, the Son spoke, the Holy Ghost spoke, and they all three spoke and said, let there be light. And light was made. And when God saw that what he did was good, he saw that the Father, what the Father had done was good, what the Son had done is good, and what the Holy Ghost has done was good. And so it is absolutely most essential and absolutely most necessary that we believe in this sacred and divine <laughs> truth that all men must believe in order to go to heaven, that God is Father, <coughs> Son, and Holy Ghost. And these three are one. And we must believe these things in order to be pleasing to God and in order to go to heaven. So in any case, they are not just secondary truths of our catechism. They are most necessary for salvation. They also remind us that it is more important what you believe then it is what you do. What you do should follow what you believe. But the first act of man is to believe. The first act of man is to think. The first act of man is to make a decision with his mind, to adore the truth, to believe the truth, to follow the truth. And then his other actions will then follow after that action. Hence, when you become a Catholic, the priest asks, what do you believe? Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of earth? Do you believe in his only Son, our Lord? Do you believe in the Holy Ghost? Do you believe in these things? And if you notice, the Apostles' Creed is divided into three parts. The Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are one. There is only one doctrine divided up into twelve articles. And we believe in the Father, the Creator, the Son, the Redeemer, and the Holy Ghost, the Sanctifier. We believe in all three faces of the one God. And there is no creation without the Father, there is no sanctification without the Son. I mean, with no, uh, no, uh, no redeeming without the Son, and no sanctification without the Holy Ghost. And without these three things, we are nothing. So therefore, it's believe firmly the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost, and, and never let our faith be diminished or changed by any age.
Amen.